He did win the Caulfield Cup, um, but hopefully at the start of this episode, we'll try and find the Everest winner. Not only that, we're going to determine the entire field. Sheesh. Well, if we determine the entire field, then we'll also find the winner. I amongst, think so. Amongst those names. Mm. It's looking pretty bare at the moment, isn't it, mate? It is, but I'm an optimist at heart. And uh, yeah, jeez, there's a few there's a few drifters that have a, have opinions uh, as well, which is good to see. But I wish I win. Yep. From Trackside Media. Yep. Has a slot and bustling for Max Wickby, Cole Madden, and Neil Werrett has a slot as well. Mm. Um. I'm trying to think of... Let's go like the ones that are obvious, right? So, let's start with, say, Yulong. Yeah, I think the ones that are obvious are the ones where they're pretty much going to select one of their own horses. As a first point of call. That makes sense, right? Like we've seen, we've seen Yulong select horses that aren't their own because mm. they simply didn't have anyone that would qualify yeah. to be good enough for running in an Everest. But mm-hmm. anyway, so Yulong, as it stands right now, I text you today, couldn't find a market for growing empire in the Everest. Well, he's in there now. Is he? At, on, with the good people of Ned's, he's $13. Okay, because he was not there this morning. And I think when they put up the market today for this weekend at such a short price, they probably thought, you know what? If he wins this, <laughs> he's probably going to be at an Everest. Um, so I think he's the, the obvious answer for Yulong. But if something goes wrong, I thought uh, Yulong might be interested in Lady of Camelot because mm-hmm. she is by Written Tycoon who okay. is... Uh, their leading sire. So that, that's where I thought for you, Long. See, this is where you pay the bills in these conversations. <laughs> because you, they've got preferences. Well, and you understand like the like the stallion nature of these investing uh, these investments, right? Yes. I just look at the pretty silks. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, hers are pretty. Like I like the, um, the yellow silks. They're yeah. fam- famous silks, those mm-hmm, ones. Mm-hmm. All right, so Growing Empire with Lady Camelot as the second seed. I like it. Mm. Good Dolphin. Now, we kind of discussed this on Sunday. Yeah. So, we're, we're locked into Spacewalk, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> well, he's racing this weekend, actually. I think down the straight, stranger things have happened. Like, yeah. I, I think he could put a hoof for it if he beats that field in the Bobby Lewis by two lengths. Yeah, he can, he can run a bomb sometimes, Spacewalk. But, uh, yeah. Another guy resumes this weekend for the traffic warden. We yeah. sp- speaking about on Sunday, like you'd think so. Yeah, yeah. I'm locking in traffic. Warden. Yeah, you'd yeah. think so. Uh, he'd have to run really poorly for for them not to pick him. Yeah, I think mm. so. Okay, all right. So those two are done. Cool more. Interesting. Yeah, it is interesting. Um, it depends. It depends what happens this weekend mm. between Switzerland and Storm Boy. Uh, if Switzerland. I think if Switzerland comes out and runs a great race, top three, looks like he's got more under the tank, uh, more in the tank, more under the hood, then I think he's the pick. But if Storm Boy runs him ragged, then I don't, I don't know. They're sort of talking about him as a Caulfield Guineas Cox plate horse. It's like, oh. well, if that's the case, then Switzerland's got to be the number one seed. Do you I reckon? Th- I don't know. I think for Storm Boy being a justify cult, I think they're so desperate for that group one, which the Everest is kind of got that gravitas. Yes, yes, yes. Kind of went to start after not winning mm. a group one. He won an Everest. So I think he's, the, but I think they're going the more traditional route with this horse. Yeah. It's like if he's a group one winning son of uh, Justify, you can, I think you could sell that at the market. Yeah, I think so. I think you already can with him, yeah. to be honest. So adding that group one will just. Give them license to give him a home affairs type <laughs> starting fee. Yeah. Six figures. So I'm more so team Switzerland at this stage. I think so. Yeah. The only other thing is Switzerland's trained by Chris Waller and Chris mm. Waller has a slot, but there's another horse that probably Mate, he has top of the tree there. He has three in it already. Mm. Well, let's talk about Chris Waller then. Chris, Christopher. Christopher Waller. I think Jolly Star's got not only her hoof in the starting lane for Chris. Yeah. I think she's she's almost on the podium already for me. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, she's she's the no-brainer for Chris. Um, the only thing is if like another uh, slot holder negotiates a really good deal with the the connections mm. of, of Jolly Star, but yeah. I, no, I think I think Chris Waller would have had the front foot on that one already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I believe so. Um, okay, John Camilleri. Yeah, so 
John Camilleri silks are uh, the Argentia silks that you rightly pointed out the other day. <laughs> and um, so he purchased Sunshine in Paris after she won her group one. So she's uh, racing this weekend as well against Jolly Star. I, I would imagine if she runs super, she doesn't have to win. I reckon if she comes second or third, she'll probably take that slot for John Camilleri. I. 100%. Who yeah. else does he have? I don't really know off the top of my head. Yeah, and he he doesn't necessarily need to run one of his own, but he's going to give her every opportunity, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. 100%. Now, this is where we get into the funky ones. I think there's one other one for, I guess, like a breeding kind of operation, Newgate and GPI racing. Yeah. I'm fascinated to hear what you have here because I was trying to look at th- basically like the Newgate silks. Yeah, yeah. Um tricky really tricky for them so they actually had think about it last year mm. so that, that makes things interesting to see how he returns um but there's an another cult who's actually resuming in the run to the rose this weekend another chris waller cult called emirate and he's by extreme choice who's newgate's pinup stallion uh again if, if emirate if emirate runs a, a bold race on the weekend then I, I think they'll snap him up. For me, for me, I sort of thought about it differently. I thought, okay, who are the horses right now who I think have to be in there? Yeah. And I think the top of the tree, and she's not being spoken about enough, is Bella Nipotina. Mm. Has to be in there somewhere. Mm-hmm. So then it's like, okay, who who snaps her up? Yeah. yeah. I think it'd be like one of those like Tab or ATC, you know what I mean? Yeah. I've, I've got her in one of those yeah. kind of slots as well. So I yeah. think that kind of, I think, this is I my I went with Newgate. Um, I went a bit outside the box, kind of like going with that thinking. If this horse horse knocks off, uh, Growing Empire this weekend in the Poseidon, High Octane could take that spot. He's the other one, yeah. Like, and I guess he's had a bit of a bit of a ugh, career so far, but he's shown a lot of talent when he's got it right, mm. and he was held up a lot. Uh, first up, and I think there might be some intent with J Mac on this weekend. So yeah. I'm, I'm, I reckon he's potentially one. But you're right about those other ones, and that's where we'll kind of cover those off for the rest. So I guess the next one would be James Harron. Um, he had Giggy Kick a couple of years ago. He had Giggy Kick when when he won. So <clears throat> Giggy Kick's going to race again over 1200 meters in two weeks, I'd imagine. Mm. If if he runs super, it's there's so much depending on you know the next couple of weeks it'll all unfold. But as it stands right now, if I was a slot holder and someone said to me, "Hey, you've got gig kick," I'd be happy with that. Yep. So I'd imagine he'll get snapped up. I'd prefer to take him, even though Private Eye beat him mm. fair and square on the weekend. So did Bellini Patina for that matter, uh, and I am me lol. Mm. I, I I'd I'd be I'd have gig kick. Yeah, I over think then. So. Yeah. Been there, done it. Mm. Um, I haven't spoken about any three-year-old fillies, have we? Well, yeah, we touched on Lady of Camelot. Yeah, or th- Lady of Camelot, yeah. I've got... Um, I have one... If James Harron, I just feel like he's one that kind of goes outside the box. He proved that with Giga Kick as well. So I kind of had two three-year-old fillies as backups for him. Mm. But you could probably have these, obviously, ba- as backups for the, like, the rest of the slot holders as well. I had Lady of Camelot as one. Mm. Uh, not really going into depth with like the breeding element. Yeah. But Hayasugi is another one for me. I think as it stands right now, I was looking at the market today and she's around that sort of $26 mark um, in futures. Man, I think she's the play. Yeah. That was an unbelievable return. Watching that uh, replay of the, Moya. of the Moya. She, you cannot tell me that she ran any, any worse than, oh, I wish I win. No way. No and we know that she's going to be better over 1,200 meters. Absolutely. Um, last time she was in Sydney, failed miserably, but put a line through that. Mm. So you're, fe- you're effectively saying <laughs> since she since she resumed as a two-year-old in the autumn, she won, what, three on the trot, including the blue diamond, put a line through that golden slipper run. And then her first up run as a three-year-old, she came home like a freight train over a thousand meters in a group one forgotten three-year-old for yeah. sure she's she's like that mid sort of 20s mark like i was saying i'll tell you what i'm gonna put it on my ned's profile after this podcast drifters like that's i'd be snapping her up yeah and she can win the manicato and if she 
if you, she doesn't get a run in the race, you get it. It's a free hit. Exactly in the in the Everest. Exactly. So um, she she has to get a slot. Whether it's look, I've got her against like Tab. You know, yeah, yeah. I think if you, if you're Tab, if you're the star Arrowfield, um, you know James Harron, anyone who's not who's outside of those sort of big breeding farms, I'd, I'd be mm. snapping her up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got her as like second pick for someone. She, she at, at the moment for me, she's probably like about first emergency. Yeah, yeah. Um, there is one that I have overthought, but I've kind of like. ATC, the Australian Turf Club, right? I reckon they're going to reward this to a local trainer. And I think one that they will, they'd will, they like to... I'd have to look through their... Um, uh, I guess who they've given it to in the past. But Bjorn Baker feels like a, a local trainer that they kind of reward. So I've got Steffi Magnetica or Overpass. But Overpass yeah. has to go there first up. Has to. Yeah, has to, yeah. They're, they're the two as well I had like waiting in the wings... Uh, for for like yeah that sort of ATC yeah. type um, the only one that I didn't have which you know could could would not look out of place is probably Private Eye I had Private Eye in the Star in Arrowfield yeah I think every every horse we've mentioned I think unless anything pops out of the ground they're the ones mm. like, I don't think there's a horse we haven't mentioned that'll win the Everest mm. as yeah. it stands right now and I had Bella for Team Green. Yeah, that makes sense. She's a, she's the punter's horse, so yeah. that makes sense. Um, maybe after this, we can put together ours in a little table yeah. and have a couple of emergencies and post that in our stories. I think so. Oh, hey, we'll even post it on the feed, mate. How about that? We'll post it on the feed, yeah. Um, For the drifters to have a look at. And like, yeah, I think some naysayers in the game are coming out saying like, oh, geez, the Everest is starting to lose its polish a little bit, blah, blah, blah. You know, the field's not looking super hot so far. It's like, well, that's 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 a completely wrong way of looking at it. I reckon the right way of looking at it is this is an incredibly even bunch, mm. which is phenomenal for the race. And like, yeah, would Nature Strip brain these? Would, you know, some others in the past brain these? Should, sure. Yeah. Sure. Sh- should Huckle would fly past this? Sure. Yeah. But guess what? They're not fucking there. And I think to Josh Bell's point, loyal listener of the show... Slot holders have worked out not to go early. That's for sure. Mm. It's a great point, especially in it's an a even, great point, especially in an early year. Uh, sorry, in an even year, because what's the rush? If you know, if the eighth in the market is pretty much going to be like I don't know a fifteen dollar shot or a twenty dollar shot, like you, you're going to have a you're going to have a really competitive horse in this race anyway. You're absolutely right. Like, what is what is the rush? The rush, um, like. Let's have a quick look at the market here. So I have, I wish I win at fives with Jolly Star, Bella Nipotina at eights with Giga Kick, Storm Boy at elevens, Growing Empire at thirteens, Lady of Camelot fifteens, Bustling already has a slot at seventeens with Sunshine in Paris. Think about it. He's one we didn't discuss last year's winner. Think about it. Yeah, I mentioned him for one of the slots. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah, as, as like a yeah, because they raced again? him last year. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I didn't. I kind of put a line through him just because I think he's been mismanaged. Um, mm. Estriella, I don't think she gets a slot. I think she had to run better first up, unless she proves improves drastically. Yeah. Hey, Sugi's coming to twenty one dollars since you kind of talked about that with I and Me overpass and Private Eye, Daft Cabin at twenty sixes with Chain of Lightning, Coleman, Espionage, Millstream, Steffi Magnetica, Switzerland, Traffic Warden V eight V eight. Interesting. Yeah, it's interesting. Oh, I think he's probably a more of a fourteen hundred meter yeah. horse, yeah. Uh, and he'd be heading to a golden eagle, wouldn't he? Or is he a five year old now? No, three year old, five, four year old, four year old. Yeah, I Obviously. believe so. Yeah, yeah. He ran in the Guineas, didn't he? That's right. Yeah. 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 I can saw kids fifty one dollars. Bjorn Snodgers is fifty one dollars. <clears throat> Bernadette, Bernadette is not the worst fifty to one pop. Like she's she's better than Arkansas Kid. Yeah, she is. <laughs> like yeah, that's fair. It's a fair assessment. Corniche, if you know, if Traffic Warden bangs up badly, Corniche is probably the top number one seed for Godolphin. Fifty one dollars for them, but he should be a fifty one dollar chance in that race. So, yeah, fascinating. Gatsby's all of a sudden is fifty one dollars. <laughs> sheesh. Marzu's fifty one dollars. Yeah, sheesh. 
So yeah, well, you look at this market and it is incredibly even. Like, yeah, no, no need to rush. Um, yeah, I've, I've, I've been really warming to, to Hayasugi after watching that replay. Want to back her wherever she goes. Yeah, she just launched like a good horse. She is a good horse. Yeah, just <laughs> really, really liked it. Yeah, so could be a couple of, um, couple of what a filly and a mare in the top two with Jolly Star. Hmm. And Hayasugi. Yep. yep. Interesting. But uh, no, the, yeah, the picture will get clearer after this weekend. That's for sure. Yes. Mate. I think I think the most fascinating uh, race of the spring thus far is this weekend. Which one's that? I guess you have to wait and see. Okay. All right. Well, shall we get into Flemington? Yeah. Rails in the true. Done it at the start this time, which is helpful. Um, How's the weather looking though? There's a little bit of rain around, but Flemington drains well. It'll be good for. Yeah, I'd say it'll be good for by the. T- it'll be a genuine good for, I would imagine, because it's a little bit cold. Should we get to the Maccabi Diva? Let's get to the Maccabi Diva. If my computer wanted to freaking oh, load. Oh, that's a shame. There we go. There you go, mate. All right, so sixteen hundred meter Group One. Wait for age. Who'd you who who did you like here? Prior to Jenny's almost. She's seven bucks now. <laughs> yeah. Oh, look at you. If you're a forgiving type, that's, oh, I know who Tony's going to be on. Yeah, Tony will be on. <laughs> if you're a forg- if you're a forgiving type, you're just licking your lips. You're yeah. thinking like, line through that first up run. Give me, give me seven dollars. Can I say something? Sure. There's no fly in the ointment here with Gentleman Roy. He ain't no. in the race this time. No fly in the ointment. And at she's all. proven that she just likes basically racing by herself. Yes, and she likes Flemington. Yeah, she likes Flemington a lot. Um, the Flemington Mile, she's three starts, two wins. They were back-to-back group ones. So oh, I think if you're the forgiving type, absolutely dive in to Pride of Jenny. Mm. This, sets, this sets up better for her than last start. Way better. Way better. And you're getting a way better price. Yeah. Um, Via Sistina drawing gate one, bit icky. Yeah, but smallish field. Like she'll probably go back anyway, but... The large, massive Flemington straight with... Who's that? James McDonald on. <laughs> That's pretty good. It's a good booking. She. <laughs> so I think, um, yeah, she's clearly classy enough. Like never been outside the Quinella in Australia. Only three runs, but two wins and a second where she was given none in that Queen Elizabeth. Zero mm. chance. Yeah, zero chance. So um, she's obviously like the horse to beat. And I think we'll it'll be a line in the sand this weekend of like, oh, okay, that's how much better she is than say a Pride of Jenny, a Mister Brightside, who are right there. Mm. It's almost like, what do you reckon? Yeah, I'm. I'm just going to be fascinated by the tactics in this race, and for that reason, it's probably a stay out race for me, mm. uh, because I think Pride of Jenny is. I think she's the bet at that price. Like, I, I think she's the bet because she's going to be punching up out the front on her own. Declan Bates just saying, gallop, girl. And she just might get away with it again. Mm. Because like you said, who's going to take him up? Mm. I see a guy called Mr. Brightside who might be slightly forgotten. He's nearly four bucks and he ran super in the, in the Memsey. He'll improve second up to a mile. Drawn super. He jumped better last start in the Memsey Watch than what he did in the autumn. So maybe he's the one to take him up and Craig just knows that it needs to be a bit more assertive perhaps. Yeah. So I'm, I'm not sure. And do you know what I'm going to do with this race, mate? I'm going to have a throw at the stumps. Love it. Like, because it's, it's probably a watch race for me. So if it's a watch race, what do we like to do if we still want to be involved somehow? Uh, just have a throw at the stumps. Have a throw at the stumps on a roughie. Yeah. Yeah. And there's a guy who's already trimmed up in the market. And trialed super, and will he be looking for further? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Does he have talent though? He has an abundance of talent, mm. and I think there's a guy who I speak to regularly about horse racing who likes it when stays resume at a mile. Oh, mate, uh, does he have any residual fitness? I might ask you. Significant, <laughs> significant amount. <laughs> significant amount. Group one, Mickey D on. Sorry, can I? <laughs> what was his winning margin <laughs> last start? <laughs> <laughs> Ten lengths. <laughs> hey! Oh my god! 
Look, if I was going to find a knock about Warmonger we're talking about, if I was going to find a knock, last time he raced over a mile, was it packing him? <laughs> <laughs> and Rampant Lion beat him fair and square that day because he ran sixth. <laughs> Rampant Lion's going around today. And we're recording on a Wednesday. <laughs> Drifties. <laughs> so that's a knock. But I think the, the Price Kent Junior table, listen to me make a case about it, 27 to 1. Probably. No, please. They spoke about this horse for his entire three-year-old seeing, saying, he's like, yeah, he's a big dumbo. Mm. He's got no idea what he's doing. Mm-hmm. He's so green. Mm. And he was ridden super conservatively in all of his races, and he was launching late every single time, and all of those races did not have any tempo. So they're not going to suit a guy who has lungs like bloody Inthorpe. <laughs> big, big lungs. Grant Hackett even. <laughs> big lungs. Big Queensland lungs. Big Queensland lungs. In the derby... Blake thought, you know what? I'm just going to take this guy forward and sit three wide with no cover. I'm going to use bro's lungs. Yeah, use bro's lungs. And he had some of the quickest sectionals in the finals, like last 600 meter sectionals in the meeting. He would have been seven wide at least. 2,400 meters. So I saw, I saw the opening price for him was in the 40s and I was like, get me some of that. Didn't get on. Now he's trimmed up into 27s. Look, will he be much shorter than that? Maybe, maybe into the teens. Or, I don't know. I reckon you'll get a price for him. Yeah. I'm happy to have a throw at the stumps because he could just have an incentivized like prep. Just five of them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. What's 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 the harm? There's no harm. He could have one of those preps where he comes out, runs super in this, like top three, runs super in the bloody Underwood, mm. wins the Turnbull, mm-hmm. wins the Caulfield Cup. Yep. He could. Yeah, he could. One of his main competitors is out. Yeah. Riff Rocket. Yeah, I saw that. Hopefully he's okay. Mm-hmm. Mm. So yeah, that's what, that's how I'm gonna that's how I'm gonna play the race. Just a little each way spec on one. Yeah. No, I think that's I think that's a I'm not I'm not judging you for mm. that. Why would I? Um there's one that we can't win, that's circle of fire. He can he cannot win. Even though he's a stay resuming, he can't win. <laughs> I'm telling you that now. Like I've been able to identify the dross trials. He's probably the worst of the lot. Uh circle of fire. Um Yeah, if I was to Push a rough here. I was thinking about a tissue. She's much better at Flemington, but like, you know, she was three and a half lengths off Via Sestino. And I'm like, do you, at Way for Age, do I really think that she's going to peg that back? I really don't think so. So I really found that difficult. But Via Sestino, I just really see it really difficult for Via Sestino to kind of lose this race. Yeah, I do. Um, I just think she's that much better than the likes of Mr. Brightside and. Probably Jenny on her day, you know, beat it by six and a half. But, you know, if there's another bunny to chase, which I, I think she'll turn the tables here. Yeah, and what I like about um, Via Sestina is that 1,400 metre uh, wing stakes, they don't actually go super quick and mm. she's still able to rattle home like that. So if, even if, you know, she's doing that, she's doing that off a slow pace. Like she can do it off a fast pace because she wants 2,000 metres and this is a mile. So... Mm. Incredibly hard to beat. She's too short for me to bet into. Pinstriped? Antino? I think Pinstriped has had his moment. Um, I can see him running well, but... Yeah, Antino, again, like... He'll be dead last, probably. Yeah, that's the thing. It's like he missed a start last start, so... The thing I will say about Mr. Brightside, I've kind of had this opinion his entire career after the statistics have come out, but... He's not a Flemington horse, this horse. He, he's won two times at the track from nine attempts. He's been in the top three five times, so he races really well there, but he doesn't show his best. So his winning strike rate is 22% there versus a career strike rate of 46%. He likes a tight turning track where yeah. it's a short straight and he can just use his short, sharp sprint to yeah. get home. Yeah, so I'm very keen, and he won the race last year, right, against like the likes of an aging alligator blood. Um, so I'm keen to kind of... Yeah, leave Brightside out of the equation. But, you know, I've been wrong before. So, yeah, there's a stainer on top for me, but I'll I'll have a, on my Ned's, Ned's account, I'll have a uh, Ned's same race multi via Sustainer first and Warmonger into fourth. Yeah, absolutely. That'll be great. Get some value. Yeah, that'd be fantastic. I hit a few of those on the weekend. <laughs> um, <laughs> all right, Exford Plate, race two. Let's go to Flemo. Um, listed race for the 40, 1,400 metres for the three-year-old set weights penalties. I thought you'd 
probably have the likes of Daggers and Dawn Service lead this up. Um, I thought this was a tough little race. Mm -hmm. Dawn Service ran second to Autumn Glow, obviously some of the best form for the three-year-olds thus far. But I thought Daggers was probably the horse to beat here. I think so. I think he was the horse to beat, and also he's a half-brother to our guy Miramasa. Love that. So, you know what? Purely based on that. Yeah. Same silks. Lovely. Same trainers. Yep. Love that for him. Yeah. Okay. Still a cult. Mm. So, yeah, Daggers for me. I think Flemington's going to suit him, even though he's going to go to the front, because he's got a nice, like, yep. big flowing action. Mm -hmm. So, Daggers for me. Yeah, love it. Tell you what, the Captain Teves, 1100 metres listed for the three year old Phillies, set weights and penalties down the straight. There, I don't know. I don't know where you're going to look here because there is speed galore. They are going to go hammer and tongs here, so it could set up for something with a brilliant finish. But to be honest, there is so many different little form references references here. I found this an impossible race to do form on. Yeah, impossible, absolutely impossible. Uh, look, our girl drifting quickly becoming a podcast favorite. Of course, she's she so well named, mm -hmm. very well, named. so well named. She's drawn well, gate 11, and even though she led last time, we've also seen from her that she can take a bit of a seat. Mm -hmm. She's coming back to 1,100 metres. I don't mind that on this occasion. Um, sorry, staying at 1,100 metres. I don't mind that on this occasion um, because she's actually going to have nearly a, a month between runs. Mm. So <sighs> there's, there's going to be enough sort of a, of a let up there for her to be sharp again over 1,100, I believe. Is she a straight horse? To be seen. To be seen. Ran there once for a second, so I think she can handle it. Bold Bastille, after running with mm. the big dogs, does she bounce back? Yeah, she was dross, wasn't she? Uh, oh, not real. That's probably a bit harsh. Like, Mornington Glory beat her by two lengths. Subsequent, subsequent group one winner. So, mm -hmm. um, she did have the 50 kilos that day, and she was on the drift huge as well that day i think she was about low two dollars when we were talking about it and then she started nearly four bucks on the day so significant drift so the market spat her out uh against her own sex here is much much more up her alley absolutely um i'll be betting on drifting just because i'm a fan and i think she's got more under the hood than a lot of these yeah i think i'm to be seen here i don't think it's really a race i'm that interested in playing in the Poseidon, though, 1,100 metres listed for the Colts and Gelding, set weights and penalties. Growing Empire is your eighty favourite. Drawn Barrier 3 with Mark Zara on. And then you have some Sydney horses um, like High Octane, Prost as well coming down. And another interesting Colt for Price and Kent Jr., first settler for you long as well. Um, very impressive winner. Last start against the likes of Landmark. Any firm opinions here? Do you, are you on the favourite uh, growing empire? Oh, look, he's he's multi bait at that price. Couldn't back him sort of straight out, but oh, I think he, I think he's a Group One winner in waiting. Growing mm -hmm. empire, and and if he is, he should be putting these away. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah. What about Arthur Ardvark? A A R D V A R K. <laughs> yeah, I don't I don't mind Ardvark. I just I just think I'd, growing empire is just so much better. Like he he brained them last start, he's down. Yeah, that's true. I think um, I think the bet in the race for me is something very small, one by three. It's a high octane mm. for J Mac, Snow, uh, Peter Snowden. I just what I don't like about his preparation and the, the, is that he's gone back to the trials again. Maybe it's because he just wasn't even like didn't even uh, like really have a run first up potentially. But it, at least when he did go back to the trial mid uh, mid prep. He did brain him by six lengths. Yeah. So that's, I think he's actually feeling himself. He's feeling pretty good. I actually love Flemington for him. I think he's Barry Seven's like cherry ripe. I think J Max just going to get him into clear air. And once this horse has the opportunity to really wind up, he shows a pretty electric turn of foot. $11, I think, is a big price for him. Um, it is a big mick price for him. So, yeah, I'm. I'm keen on high octane just to, as a little bit of a spec bet. Could be another Ned's same race multi candidate it with could, Growing Empire. Could be. His dam is Granny Red Shoes. Remember that horse? She was only running around about four or five years yeah, ago. Yeah, I do actually. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. 
Now, the Archer. I couldn't believe you telling me about this. I can't believe it's moved from Derby Day. Mm. When was that decided? When? Why weren't we consulted? Yeah, it is a good question. Like, why are they diluting Derby Day? So they took away um, the, Cantala. the Cantala, pushed it a week back, and now they've taken the Archer. Why are you diluting the, the like punter's it. best day? I don't, like, I don't it. like it at all. So, Do you know what they're replacing it with? If it's another sprint race, I'll walk out. <laughs> It has to be a two thousand meter race, right? Sheesh, has to has be. to be, has to be, has to be, has to be a twenty five hundred meter race at least. Like it'll be, it'll be a two thousand meter race, or a because they've taken the one of the miles away with the Cantala. It has to be a two thousand meter race. It has to be. Mm. I don't know. Or they could just not have ten races and just go back to nine. Like I don't get it because. Like, Shocking won the Melbourne Cup not that long ago from the Archer. So, you're taking away a bit of history there. I don't like it at all. And they typically, if they run on the Saturday, they typically run top 10 in the Cup. Like, mm. they do, they are, you know, they get their connections some prize money. Absolutely. My, my thing with it, if you're moving it, why are you moving it to now? It, it's, like, Mel, Melbourne Cup's six weeks away. It doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense. So unless unless we've kind of overlooked something, maybe they've maybe there's another win you win in your in race that's replaced it, but that would make zero sense at all. Why would you just change for the sake of change? It makes no sense. Um, but look, <laughs> that being said, I'm having a punt in this race. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I like number eight, Point King. So do I. Yeah, yeah. I really liked him last start. Um, and I, th- I thought he put that field away with some authority. He lightly weighted here. J Carr draws a gate. Um, this is his second run for the stable. So he was with Chris Lees for one run and mm. they shifted him across to Anthony and Sam Friedman. Uh, yeah. I like him, five dollars fifty. I think I think he uh, I think he's coming a bit today already. Mm. But yeah. No, I I agree with you. That last run at Mooney Valley really put some guac in my taco. Mm. Really did. That was over 2,000 meters and all these overseas forms over 25 to 28. Against the likes of uh, like Absurd and those type of horses, you know? So Yeah. Vorban. So I don't think it's got... Look, I don't think it's a Point King Brains and type race, but he's, no. he's the one I'm keen to play at $5.50 at the moment. Like him and Post Impressionist, very similar careers. Yes. Um. Post Impressionist, Australian debut, absolutely the brain of Bahuti Brain. He brained uh, Man's Voice in Almania. Uh, next start in the tank the next week, he ran last. And then he had an okay run in that horrifying uh, Berkshire Breeze race where, you know, 2,500 meters, you'd probably be hoping to see something a little bit better from him. Mm. Whereas I think Point King has proven at his presumption that, yeah, okay. I think he's the horse you kind of want out of the two. Mm. Um, Horrifying has avoided the bookies this prep. Like he has, he was sixty to one when he won first up, and then he was uh, ten bucks at Flemington beating Berkshire Breeze. Berkshire Bre- Breeze probably leads this field from out wide, but I think so. Kind of want to avoid him based on that last run. It was a bit, a bit, ugh. a little bit, yeah, and. You know, he's six weeks between runs here. So, I'm, yeah, I'm happy with the Point King punt. Yeah, same. So am I. Um, let's go to the Valet Black Caviar. Listed 1,400 metres. Four-year-old's four year an open handicap. So, what did I see here? It was a bit all over the shop, really. All the speeds drawn out wide with the likes of Ellswood, Snowman, your guy, uh, Bandersnatch, Snatch, and Aaron Bay. Aaron Bay was a winning machine last prep. Absolute winning machine. He was. I think he appreciates Flemington too. The victim was on a fair bit. Mm. You know who I thought was an enormous price given what he did at 100 to 1 first up last prep was Macran. <laughs> Macran. <laughs> $17. Well, that's not $100. No, it's not. But first up, he loves Flemington. Absolutely adores it. I think the better tracks are the key to him as well. Mm. So he's not the worst. Barry Six, 54 and a half, Craig Williams. We're starting to see a bit of a trend in Melbourne. Mm. Why are we starting to call benchmark 100 races listed rates? <laughs> <laughs> Bank more. 
Nicolino Vito, Nicolini Vito, Holy Man, Carini. These are benchmark 100 horses. Yeah. Oh, look, I'm I'm gonna. I think Snowman's gonna be ridden more conservatively here. Mm. Like he was dross last start. Yeah, he wasn't great. He was dross. Bit more of a conservative ride. Hmm. Twenty to one. I'll have another, I'll have another throw at the stars because nothing else interests me. What about Chrysaor? Yeah, Chrysaor the stable mate. Yeah. Yeah, he's, he's resuming. A oh, couple of trials. Look, he's he's never won over fourteen hundred meters from six attempts. No, but. But he, has, he, he hasn't won much in his this career. This is a benchmark 100, bro. <laughs> yeah. They all win at some point. That's it, that's, that's it mate. So, so a benchmark 100, but he's had eight career starts at group three level or higher, which is more than half of his career. And he's, with the greatest respect, you're not at that grade of horse. This is his grade. Froggy knew it on. I think at $18, he's, he's, he's one you have to put, oh, if it wasn't in your, in your early quality. It has to be in there. Mm-hmm. has to um, the Let's Elope Stakes, 1,400 metre group two for the Mares, set weights penalties. Interesting little race here. Quintessa beat a lot of these last start, five bucks. She's probably your starting point. Mm. Yeah, interesting her winning first up over 1,200 metres. She ran fourth in the Australian Oaks. Yeah, I know. I don't think she's star. I don't think she's a star. No, so... Yeah, if she's winning like that over twelve hundred meters, then there's surely more to come for the mm. for the rest of this prep. And in a smart stable, that let's be honest, their strike rate when they bring them over, Very and good. and since they opened that stable in Cranbourne, it's been unbelievable. So mm. I think Quintess is going to be hard to beat again. Mm-hmm. But it's not it's not that simple. You've got Vibrant Sun resuming. Uh, she was the Adelaide Oaks winner. I don't think she's a two thousand meter horse. I think she's a miler. So resuming at fourteen hundred meters. Isn't an issue for her. I think she can run a big race at 16 to 1. See You in Heaven has been good this prep. Al Safina, the Western Australian horse at $7.50. Like she, she's missed the top three once in her career. She, as I saw on Twitter during the week from Racing Previews, a good little, uh, they have a podcast as well. She was $51 in all in markets, Al Safina. She, well, ain't that, she ain't that price now. She's may the seven dollars fifty. Now. May the overs gods be kind to those gents. That's mm. unbelievable. Mm. Um, and Lady Jones, <laughs> she's a super fourteen hundred meter horse. Uh, I don't think Flemington's her go, but she wouldn't shock either. So it's a, it's a tricky race. Oh, might be another candidate for a Ned same race multi. <laughs> it could be. I tell you what, the victim's going to have a tough time this weekend. Yeah. Yeah, Flemington always is though. Yeah, it so, is. Well, he's been the valley's been very kind to him and punters this mm. this season thus far. So yeah, yeah, that's all right. Okay, so race nine then, race nine the Bobby Lewis twelve hundred meters group two open handicap. There was a few here that I didn't mind. Unfortunately, there's a lot. There's <laughs> yeah, a lot yeah, happening here. Yeah, there's a lot again. Like, what is this? Five dollars fifty the field. So right to party is your favourite. Mm. You can have you can have that mare in my humble with we got a dog, John McNeil on. Yeah. Uh I have backed her her last three starts. Congratulations. And she's won every time. Mm-hmm. Because one, those silks. And two, <laughs> we got a dog, John McNeil owes me money <laughs> over time. Um but yeah, couldn't possibly in this race. Not with not with the likes of my girl, Benedetta, even though she's got a lug a bit of weight, she loves the straight. Uh, Spacewalk, you've mentioned. Uh, Arkansas Kid, like, yeah, we're bagging him because he's not an Everest horse, but he's got 53 and a half kilos in this race. Mm. On the quick backup, mm. sometimes that's a recipe for success. Mm-hmm. Stretton Angel's a smarty. Sands Doot is a straight good. track specialist. Absolutely. She's got 53 kilos. Mickey D, seven bucks. And you know I like Skybird as well. She's 12 bucks. She was a bit naughty in the gates last start, so they had to scratch her. I uh, had to trial again before she could get back to the track. It's a it's a tricky, tricky weekend for the victim. <laughs> hey, you know it's not the worst in this. The Inferno. Oh, no, he's not the worst in this. <laughs> oh, I'm mate. I'm telling you. I'm telling you for sure. Like, he found some... He's a listed grade horse, right? He is. Yeah. And this is a group two. 
But I don't think it's like a vintage edition of a group two, right? No, this is this is I'd say it's, this is group three. It's even. This is an even group three. Even. I think a twenty to one in a group three that sounds about right. And um I think he he can run super Barry fifteen if the outside rail's on and it's a good track. I think that is that's his sweet spot. You and I have to make a commitment to each other mm-hmm. right now. Mm-hmm. The two of us are putting on a quaddy this weekend in Flemington because the amount of roughies we've spoken about, we have to. Oh. This is getting a field though. <laughs> Big F. <laughs> this last league is getting a field. Of course it has to. It has to. It has to. Actually, field we'll and we'll leave out right to party the favourite. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and we can leave out the astrologist. When's the last time that horse won? Hang 91 on. weeks. Hang on a second. Number one, Laws of Indices. I know. Yeah, I saw that. Philip Stokes trains him now. Seven-year-old horse. Yeah. God. God. Like, he last ran in the All-Star Mile last year. So, where has that horse been? I'm assuming it's done tendon or something. Yeah, it must have. So, must have. like, it's a weird race. You have Griff in here. Like, what's he doing here? Like, strange, 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 yeah, strange weird, race. weird race. So, uh, weird. yeah. Weird. <laughs> but when it's not chase. Like, yeah. would he shock? No, I think he... I think he's done his best racing down the straight. Mm. So, uh, but also, so spacewalk. So, I don't know, man. I don't know. It's like, I'm just going to kind of, I like about five of them. I'll put them in a random number generator and pick one. Mm. Uh, that's the type of race it is. Um, now, Sydney. Okay. Sydney. I think we want to go to race six, the Scirocco Stakes. 1,200 meters, group two for the Phillies and Mares, set weights and penalties. Jolly Star, dollar seventy five versus Sunshine in Paris, four dollars twenty. Macarena six fifty. I think she will not start that price. She has to get out. And then I think you could almost reverse the prices of those two. And commemorative, I think will both of them will start about eight bucks. I reckon that's my prediction. Um, Tears Invincible is a big price at thirty one dollars. Mm. Look, I'm not a an exotic better, but mm. if I was ever going to be more confident in Quinella. This one? Oh, Sunshine in Paris, a jolly star. Quinella them up. That's it. That's all you do. They are, it starts with P, ends in annals. It's not Toddy Parnell. <laughs> Panels. Panels above the rest of these. Yeah. Panels. Yeah, okay. We're talking about Jolly Star, who could win an Everest at a start after this race. Mm. And we're talking about Sunshine in Paris, who had a slot last year mm. and has been racing in all our group ones on heavy decks, which she doesn't like. No, she doesn't. She's a five-year-old man now, not a four-year-old. Mm. Those two panels, Quincy, bang, done. That's how you play the race. You take your two whatever to one. It'd be better than that. Three bucks? Ish? So rough math, if you want to calculate your rough, rough, rough Quinella odds. I'm sure I've said this on the podcast before. But you have the two SPs for the horses. You times them together and then you divide them by two. So about two bucks for Jolly Star, four bucks for Sunshine in Paris. Times them by two, divided by two, that's four bucks. That'll roughly be what the Quinella plays. That's a nice play. It'll be a big pool. It will be. Because, yeah, and the thing is, is like there'll be a lot of punters that take Jolly Star into another horse mm. and vice versa. Yes. So, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm, yeah, I, I think that's the way I'll play too. You've talked me into it. Mm-hmm. The Ming Dynasty, 1,400 metres group three for the three-year-olds open handicap. I thought this was a weird little, weird little race here. Mm. Like Mayfair has shown some talent, but you know was second behind Stormboy. But kind of something had to run second there, if you know what I mean. Like, I know what you mean? Four dollars forty for him as favourite. I'm kind of keen to take him on with a couple of horses that were against Autumn Glow. Some alternative three year old form. That's my old mate Snack Bar. And I thought Gary Portelli's Colt Ironhawk was even better. And you're getting $14. Yeah, it's a big price for Ironhawk. Um, but it's not a two-year-old, so I'm not going to back uh, Gary Portelli. <laughs> um, I like number 11, Lady Shenandoah. Mm. The maiden for, for Chris Waller. Sure. Even though she didn't win, really liked her two starts. Her second ever start, well, her first ever start was behind... Clean Energy ran third, and then her second ever start was behind Clean Energy. Ran second, and that was an illicit race. Uh, yeah, got a lot of time for this little filly in great silks. Tat. Phenomenal silks. 
fantastic silks. And I think because we were talking about them so much mm-hmm. last week, mm-hmm. it's just a sign for me to back this horse. Mm-hmm. What about Mr. Artemsia racing in his dad? Well, that's uh, the other his, one. His daddy silks. Well, that's the other one. It's <laughs> the other one you've got to be aware of at 20 to 1. <laughs> daddy silks. Mm. Mm. Daddy silks, that's his daddy. <laughs> the autumn son. Who's still having a year off because of his broken penis. It's still it's still the springtime. His penis is still broken. <laughs> it's not going to heal in time. Commiserations. Yeah. Okay. The run to the rose. Is this the most intriguing race of the weekend? It is. Yeah, it is. It is. There's storylines galore here. Easily. Yeah. Easily the most intriguing. The, the most intriguing race of the spring thus far. Yeah. Oh, I don't know how to play it. I Storm Boy. Two bucks. Sheesh. Oof, that's and the market gobbled him up. Yum yum. Absolutely devoured him last start. Deep throated him, you might say. <laughs> they got so, him all inside their mouths. The market, they loved him. But they have not missed him this start. Two bucks he starts. I hope he wins, Storm Boy. Cause I just I, I'm a big fan. He's a big brute of a cult. He's a stud. He's a dude. Thick cult. And if he wins this and wins the Golden Rose and wins the Guineas and then runs in a Cox Plate, I'm, I'm a happy guy <laughs> because it's good, it's good for the it's good for the, the industry. Um, yeah, but then you won't see him again. I almost then, hope he came, continues to lose. So <laughs> <laughs> what, he's going to be a seven-year-old horse like Lords of Industries trying to jag a group one? No, like fierce impact, mate. And then eventually... He'll, 50 stars. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's it. And then eventually they just like, you know... They eventually just had enough and then they just never get any condition back. No. I think I think this is the last I think this is the last prep for Storm Boy. I really do. Well, what about the autumn? Yeah, I, I just he he's that if he keeps growing, like he'd be too gross. It, yeah. That's it. Like he's so big. Right he's now. so big. Yeah. He's 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 so big. Um the thing about the thing about the last start compared to this start for Storm Boy. Last start, you were obviously getting a better price because, you know, let's let's be honest, he was disappointing towards the end of last prep. Um, but the setup of the race was completely different. He had it all his own way last start. He just led and just grounded down into the earth. And look, I'm not, you know, I'm not an expert, but look looked pretty good. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, there's there, there wasn't a lot of horses, I think, that could have ran him down anyway. But this field is a million times better and he ain't going to get his way all, uh, up the front. Linebacker, a node, bustling. Emirate, Emirate likes to sort of be positive. I think Traffic Warden likes to be pretty positive. So mm. if he has to do a fair bit of work to lead, it could just take the juice out of him. But but at the same time, like he could just do the exact same thing and win. And I actually wouldn't mind seeing that at all. But at the price, I'm going to take Switzerland at $7. Mm-hmm. Because... He failed in the slipper, but it came a bit too soon for him, I think. And I'm, I'm assuming he probably didn't. Um, it didn't sort of recover too well either from that uh, little two-year-old cult. Presuming here, always tough to win a slipper in its first prep. Yeah, and I wouldn't be surprised if he just sort of. Like, it took a while for him to come back, mm-hmm. Switzerland, which is why he's resuming here and didn't resume in the San Domenico. This race sets up so well for him. He's drawn perfectly. He can stalk the speed. And Jason College needs to get him out at the right time. Uh, yeah, Swiss, Switzerland's the one for me. I'm going to back this weekend purely based on the price. I'm not, I am taking on Storm Boy, but I'm absolutely not potting him. Mm-hmm. And I'm also not potting Traffic Warden. I'm not, I'm not potting Linebacker. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pot Bustling because I, th- I don't think he's that good. Wow. In, really? Yeah, I don't think he's that good. You know, what we highlighted this time last week without knowing that our boy counter would be running was the amount of subsequent winners. Now, to be fair, they chip and change a lot. But how's this for reading for Bustling's last three starts? So Ascot, the 6th of April, he won by one and a half lengths. There's been one subsequent winner from that race. He won by 4.3 lengths the next start, 20th of April, two weeks later. One horse uh, subsequently won from that race. It's both of them are him. Mm. So there's been no subsequent winners since he, uh, apart from him. And then in the size 
WA size produce, he won by two and a half lengths. No horses have won since. So there's been no subsequent horses that have won from his last three starts, apart from him. Yeah. And, and so are we saying that he's, or because he's got an Everest slot already, he's, he's as good as Stormboy or Switzerland? Maybe. I, Depends. I, I, I just, I just, I didn't understand the, the purchase to bring him over from WA. Yeah, like that's a, that's a formidable record. Five starts, four wins and, and one second. And yeah, that, that reads super well for over mm. there. Al Safina's missed the, missed the trifecta once in her career. Mm. She was 50, 50s in all in markets. That's how much the, that's how much the bookies respect the WA form when it comes to the, the eastern side of Australia. Mm. Depends on the horse though. It depends on the horse, I know, but Millie's Jewel, Arcadia Queen. Yeah, and they're, they're really good. Mm. I th- he could be really good. I don't think he is. Okay. I don't think he is. I, yeah. I, I, th- I think these will beat up on him. Mm. Interesting. That's, that's my opinion. Look, yeah, right. you're entitled to it. Could my pants be pulled down? Sure. Of course they could be. And right. willing, willing, to, willing for that to happen. But you've got to take a stand sometimes. Of course you do. And I just, yeah, I'm happy, happy to take him on. I like it. He's a good looking horse, so I'll give him that. Mm. Bustling. Yeah, he kind of, correct me if I'm wrong, he looks like a, um, like just by his looks, I'm not saying by his like progeny or his like lineage. Uh, he looks like a Japanese horse to me. You know what I mean? Does he? Like, he has a black baldy face, doesn't he? He's a sort of celestial legend type. Ah, oh, forgive me. I've got that horrifically wrong. Mm. Uh, I'm thinking of another horse. He's 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 got that look where he's sort of, yeah, celestial legend or classic legend before yeah, gotcha. they turned. Yeah, yeah, before they gotcha. turned. <laughs> before they turned. Yeah. Um, Lineback is an interesting horse. Yeah, needs further. Uh, spring champion horse for me. Uh, Linebacker, I think. Apparently, be- apparently he's been a bit of a dude. Oh, has he? Yeah, oh, I love that. <laughs> Who's he out of? Super, Super Seth. Seth. Hello. Okay. So Super Seth's the son of Dundee. So yeah. grandson right. of Dundee, linebacker. You know who is a stupid price in this race, but justifiably so. But Tropicus was sensational uh, against that. Resuming, he needs further. I think. I don't know what the how how do the two darn hots go over the mile? Do they get? Do they run out a mile? Do you know? Um, Broadsiding is out of two darn hot. Hello, that this horse could that this horse could be running in a Caulfield Guineas potentially. Mm. I reckon uh, twenty six dollars. Sure so interesting. Uh, for me, the bet in the race is Traffic Warden. Um, not jumping off now. He owes me one. He does owe you one. Um, but he's he's had some of the best trials of any of these easily. Yeah. Look, I, and there's so much intent in this race for a lot of these horses. I'd rather take Traffic Warden, Stormboy, Switzerland, Linebacker, Tropicus, and Emirate over Bustling. Mm-hmm. Wow. Interesting. Fascinating. Okay. He, he, I think if if he's improved massively under mm-hmm. the new stable mm-hmm. heading into this prep, then like good on him. Yeah, great, great like, job. Honestly, good on him because like, yeah, don't rate him highly. Let's get to the last race that we'll cover: the Theo Marks Group Two, thirteen hundred meter race. The Celestial Legend is your three dollar fifty favorite or thereabouts. Should be awfully hard to beat. Kieran on. 59 kilos does give six kilos to the, you know the bottom weights here good to see Redina back friend of mine mm-hmm. won't be having him here um what did you think about celestial legend you clean to back him here Look, celestial legend's my guy we know this yeah he's my guy yeah yeah i, th- I think even even with the weight i think he's got panels okay he, he's got scotty panels on him okay uh, the one I think is at a big price is uh, New Zealand Group 1 winner. That's number 11, Molly Bloom. Molly Bloom. She's 20 bucks. Mm. That's a huge price. Uh, Just wasn't her day in the Oaks, was it? No, it wasn't. It wasn't at all. Um, there's another guy who I backed up here. Um, put him to the sword, actually, in the Gunsin Classic. Uh, bases loaded, number nine. Waterhouse and Bot Stable. Mm. Well weighted in this race. Mm. I wouldn't be surprised. Uh, but 
I've, I've got a back Mike Isler, as you legend. I think so. Because he's just so good. Yeah. I'm having one of the great... If this thing wins, I'll retire because it's that good. <laughs> That's number 13, Tannhauser. You got to back Tannhauser. $61 you are, you're getting. Sure, he might need further. He might. <laughs> but we've only seen him for two runs. One of them you couldn't put a line through the Queensland derby. It just wasn't his day. <laughs> <laughs> but the run before that in the rough habit was he was gelded mint prep. Love to see that. But he, I think, I have a feeling watching his latest trial, he's a different horse without with the ultimate gear change. He's finally figured it out. I think, I think he's not the worst at sixty-one bucks. Like I'm going to have something very small, one by three, on him. You can say what you like when they're sixty-one dollars. Exactly. I was a drifter going to do it. Send us a private message. Can't believe you talked me into it. So how much did you have on, mate? You, yeah. didn't, you didn't need much at sixty ones. No, that's it. Sixty one dollars. That is an enormous price, and I'll be, I'll be having something. You know, one by three, one by five, even at, at that quote. Like, <laughs> and if he wins, I'll look like a genius. And you, unfortunately, you won't see me on Sunday. Yeah, yeah, you'll be done. <laughs> look, we've, we've, we've had this, we've had these similar conversations over the years in the podcast. Like, if it wins, look like a genius. If it mm-hmm. loses, no one's going to hold you accountable. No way. And. um it all started with one particular horse that was backed by someone phoning in mm. and it was wearing the um, That's right. old green old silks. Yes. Was he wearing um, did, Was he wearing his new sunnies when he called in, when he did that? <laughs> it wasn't Mick, it was Mackenzie. Oh, was it? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you have too many bros. Yeah, I do. Yonkers we're talking about. Yonkers. 50, right. to, 50 to 1. Unbelievable. <laughs> that was huge. Huge, huge, huge. Yeah, ten hours of keen. Uh, Tyler Sheeler, fifty-three kilos, be negatively ridden, but uh, I think it'll be running on. I think it'll run well. So, yeah, keen for this weekend of racing. A bit of a, a bit of a line in the sand type it situation. Is. It yeah. is. It's not moving day, but it's you know it's just close to. Mm. Uh, I cannot wait. So I'm going to be at the Breakfast Creek Hotel. Good for you, mate. With the fam. Um, phenomenal place to have a punt. Yeah, just what. Get the uh, turn the music up, red fillet. Yep, mushy sauce. Oh, you're a pepper sauce guy. Pepper sauce guy. I'm actually, actually been getting the chili sauce recently at Hello. the creek. Yeah, it's been good. Okay. Hmm. Mm. Guy from work was telling me a story about the creek. I don't know if I told you. Um, they were outside in that like beer garden area. Yeah. And um, there was a big table. Of <laughs> Funny. That's right. You weren't there. You haven't heard this. Um. So, yeah, big table of them. They hear, got the bit, is it a fig tree out there or something? Yeah. Anyway, big tree out there and they hear some rustling happening above them. Hmm. Anyway, this guy looks up and as he's looked up, there's a possum and it's dropped on his head. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> he's like, ah, get it off, get it off. <laughs> anyway, so the possum's like clung on for dear life and he's like ripped it off. And apparently the possum has like ripped him like that. <laughs> and in his state of like panic, he's thrown the possum like down the table and it's just absolutely cleaned up all the steaks. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, and then um, one of the managers there, because the old mate's just gone like, I need to wash this out, obviously, because mm. it's like possum, possum rabies, scratches. Rabies in that. Yeah. Anyway, he's, he's washing his face and then he just hears this like the door bang open and it's like the manager. He's like, oh, you must be the possum guy. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, yeah, mate. He's like, oh, don't worry, mate. Uh, your next round's on us. He's like, huh? What about the what about about the five hundred dollars worth of steaks that we just had to throw out? Oh, oh, possum so. boy, possum boy, you're the possum guy. <laughs> That'd be traumatizing. It'd be shocking. I wouldn't be sitting out there again. I don't know. I don't think so. I'll keep an eye out when yeah. I'm there on Saturday. Yeah, bit of possum magic. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Good luck if you're having a punt this weekend. Do it with Ned's, uh, but gamble responsibly, of course. Enjoy, guys. See us.